Okay, this is the second part of the lecture for section 1.2, which is finding limits graphically and numerically. So in this part of the lecture, we're going to go over the formal definition of a limit. This is also called the epsilon delta definition. So these are Greek letters. This is the Greek letter epsilon, and this is the Greek letter delta. In the um, American alphabet, this would be like E and D. Okay, now the definition is let f be a function defined on an open interval containing c, c being an x value, except possibly at c, and let capital L be any real number. So the statement, the limit of f of x as x goes to c equals L means that for each epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if the difference between the x value and c, this c that you're approaching, is less than delta, then the function value minus l being the limit y value, that difference is also less than epsilon. Okay, so I've drawn a graph here. This is just a random function. It by no means defines every function. You can have the function looking any kind of which way. But I just wanted to use this to explain what was going on. Okay, so if you're taking an x value, let's say um, here's your c value and here's your limit value. If I take um, any random x, it would need to be within some delta distance away from that C. So this, if I would consider this as a unit of delta, this would be C plus delta, and this would be C minus delta, okay? So you're in some neighborhood around C. So your X value is around C, but no more than delta um, units away. And normally that's a really, really small number. It's never anything bigger than one. It's always like 0.1 or 0 0.01, something really, really small so that you're getting really close to C. So that delta gets smaller and smaller. Well, what it's saying is if you have this interval here, also known as a neighborhood around C, if you have this interval here, then automatically there's gonna exist an interval around L which makes sense because if you look at this C minus delta X value, it has a corresponding Y value that's right here. And that Y value could be L minus some epsilon if this is an epsilon difference or epsilon unit. And similar, similarly, for C plus delta, you have a Y value that is here, which could be L plus epsilon, okay? So you notice that if you're anywhere in this region, you're gonna have Y values in this region, and they're all gonna exist within this neighborhood of your limit. And that's all that the definition is saying. It's saying if you take a neighborhood around this C value, it's automatically gonna create a little neighborhood around the limit value, okay? So, Here's some statements that I want to make before we go and try to do the problems using the limit definition. So it says, when asked to prove the limit statement, you want to show, or WTS is a short version of want to show, that when this distance is smaller than delta, that automatically means or implies that this distance will be smaller than epsilon, okay? And that's a little bit difficult to do. So what I do is I start with this information, okay? And I use it to figure out what delta would need to be. Then my proof will be backtracking my steps to find delta. So basically I'm starting at the end and gonna work my way to the beginning and then I'm gonna use all of that information to start here and go in this direction, okay? It's a little bit easier 
to manipulate things when you're tearing them apart than to just automatically know what to build onto it to make the statement true, okay? And that's the reason why we go backwards in our proofs. But you'll see what I'm saying in just a minute when we get into the one.